Well, continuing on our southwest touring, we're slowly making our way back home. We've only got a week or so to go, mm -hmm. which is come up real quick. But we are done here in Bustle G'day there. Parks, Bustleton. <laughs> um, we didn't really get to spend that much time in this caravan park, to be honest. We had the whale, whale watching in the last episode, yeah. and we've just been sort of in and out of here. We haven't really got to look around, but a beautiful little caravan park. How much is it a night? 36. 36 a night, so not cheap, but there is no free camping around this area. Um, so we had to do it. Is what it is. Yep, but well worth it with the beach being right at the front there. So that's us. Yeah. Let's get on out of here. This episode, we're going to be heading back down south towards. We're heading back down <laughs> south, southwest, somewhere <laughs> down there to Dunsbury, is it? Dunsbury Cape Natch is like. Yeah, there is a lighthouse there. We want to, I guess, see if we can get the car and caravan up there because it is a good lookout. We did see it from the, the whale watching tour. So I guess we're going to get up there, have a look at that. We had to jump in the cars. We're clogging out the driveway, someone was. But we are heading towards Capel to a free camp tonight uh, via, I guess, the jetty, Bustleton jetty. We can't come to Bustleton without looking at the jetty, which is how long? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Three times the size of Brighton Jetty, uh, we found out. So I guess that's it. We'll get on the road, head towards uh, the lighthouse, Dunsborough Lighthouse. See what we see along the way. Mm -hmm. Let's get into it. Try to stop clogging up the roads. So we are here at Cape Naturalist Lighthouse. Yes, it's not the Dunsbury Lighthouse, it is the Cape Naturalist Lighthouse. And there it is. We don't really know how to think on this one, do we? It is $5 entry into the whole site. And this is really the only view you can get of it, unless you're doing a couple of walking trails around here. Yeah, you can't get near it unless you pay. Yeah, which is a little bit weird. And some of the reviews are pretty average. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not worth it. Yep. We paid to see the lighthouse at. Uh, oh gosh. Somewhere. <laughs> Augusta. Augusta. We paid to see the Augusta lighthouse, and I feel that was money better spent, yeah, lighthouse wise. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to give this see one. see there, wasn't there? Like. Yes. The surrounding um, yep. houses and stuff. The two oceans meeting. So we are going to give this one a miss. We've come up here and we've seen it, and. Um, I guess another reason we did come up here was to see if we could see some whales off the point, which we couldn't, which is a bit of a bugger. Uh, there is one little stop just on the way out of here, which we'll probably stop at as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I didn't know it was $5 entry, so it's pretty pretty annoying for me. <laughs> anyway, let's keep on going. But that is the Cape Naturalist, Cape Light. Naturalist Light. Lighthouse, and it is the last lived-in lighthouse on mainland Australia, is yeah. it? They lived and worked here till 1996. There you go. And it is still rotating. I don't know if the little GoPro picks it up. So I'm guessing it's still in order. Still working. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's get out of here. Oh, also, before we go, if you can see, there is people up there as well, which is $15 Tour. tours. Yeah, so the $5 entry doesn't even get you up into the lighthouse. Right, let's go. Keep on moving, see if we can spot some whales.
to our next little stop, which is just around the corner from Cape Naturalist Lighthouse. Lighthouse. Got it. Is Bunker Bay. And when I thought Dunsborough had million dollar houses, um, this one, this little bay here has got some multi-million dollar houses, I guess. Can't really see them as yet. You might be able to see them with the drone. But I reckon million dollar views, million dollar houses. This is a stunning spot, this one. We'll get down there and have a look around. Maybe have a dip. Dip, dip. Whoa. Thoughts? It is stunning out here. Really nice spot. So it's another sort of incredible thing is you put on some polarized sunnies, that's gonna work. But just all these different shades of blue. How'd you describe it? What did I describe it as? I, I can't, can't remember, remember now. <laughs> but it's bloody incredible this. The colors with these sunnies on. Even with the sunnies off, Protected as well. Yep. And I guess occasionally they'd get those whales going past there as well, wouldn't they? Just sitting out here, nice sunset, even though the sun goes down that way. <laughs> Catch a whale going by. I like how as soon as I start filming, fish goes away. What it, there's a fish out here, I'm not sure what it is, but it's rounding something up and jumping around a lot. Righto, first up, um, getting into Bustleton here is the weather's slowly changing. It's looking pretty cloudy and chance of rain, the Savo. Cold too. Yes, uh, but our first up is a little food market building. We have been recommended Dusty Buns Bakery, um, which is inside a food market. So we're just gonna go in there and it's in a big building. 
have a look around the food market. And then after that, there's another market. <laughs> you want to go to another market? Um, yeah, I don't know what's there, but people say it's really cool, so. Yep, you we might as well. Have a look. And then touch wood, hopefully the weather's going to hold out for us. We can get down to the jetty on the way out. Yep. But anyway, let's get something to eat and get into this. Dusty buns. So, Origins Market. And apparently they do street food, is it? No, that's the next one. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure what they do here. I only heard of Dusty Buns, that's all. Yep. Yeah. Dusty Buns Bakery. They're all really good. Good, yourself? How many skills you got? Three. <laughs> oh, this is it, Sosh. Here she comes. <laughs> How'd you go? That took a while. Yeah, he's on his own. Yep. You right there? Yours look scared. <laughs> and I can confirm, Homestead Lager is um, beautiful. But easily can have a couple of them. So a Krona, for anyone that doesn't know, including us, we only just found out. Is a donut crossed with a croissant and um, filled with a lot of stuff, so very rich. Well, that was well worth it, Sosh. Um, dangerous in there. <laughs> it is dangerous. There's free wine tasting, free gin, free tasting of everything, really. Really dangerous little spot. But bloody good. Just a good walk around. 
And pretty cool to see the bees like that. That's a um, pretty interesting little setup, the bee, bee system. It's good to see. Anyway, on to the next one, I guess. The next little markets. Yeah, let's do it. So our next set of markets. No caravan parking, so we just had to sort of gidge it on the side of the road there. Hope for the best. They knew that we were coming. <laughs> the shed indoor markets and then each street at the shed not really sure what we're expecting here you reckon it's good there's lots of good reviews that's the main thing then Oh. Sorry, Jack. Each street is closed. It's spewing. I have to go find something else for lunch. It's true, it's <laughs> Right, so a lot different of a market, isn't it? Yeah, this one's very, well, very small and um, I guess privately, I don't know, weirdly done. Like there's spices, there's crystals and things like that. Old school markets. Uh, whereas the other one was very built up and in a new building, everything was new and flash and just like that. <laughs> Take that how you will. But anyway, let's go and get some to eat, eh? Right, our last stop before we leave Bustleton is the Bustleton Jetty. Um, something we did see on the last episode, so I'm not too sure if we're gonna come out and walk it as it is. Pretty <laughs> rough old day, isn't it? Um, so we might just walk along the front again and it is $4 just for access per person to walk on the jetty. $16 to get yep. the, the train ride out there return, which is, I think it's a bit steep. Um, but then again, I haven't done it, so I don't really know. The wiki camps reviews say it's not really worth it, do they? Something like that. Yeah, I think if you're going to do it, you're going to want a nice day to do it. Yes, definitely. The day that we did the... The whale watching tours probably would have been an ideal day to see that jetty. But we'll have another little walk along the front here. And uh, oh, check that out. Is that a bit of you? A bit of you. <laughs> have, a, have a little look along the front here and then uh, probably get on out of here. Keep on moving. So 1.8 kilometers long. Three times the size of Brighton in the UK. <laughs> Brighton Pier. But they've really done this well. This little foreshore area, big skate parks, big playgrounds, everything for the kids along here. I also believe back behind us there is another couple of parks. Restaurants, uh, breweries, all that sort of jazz. The info centre's down this way as well. Yep which we did pop into on the our last episode, I believe it was. Hope it was. Look at that, that's a lot rougher than it was the first day we got here. <laughs> so you're not into it? <laughs> no, people are walking off like soaking wet. Yeah. We just passed off four or five, a group of two groups, all have wet hair and we're all soaked. So I don't think we're <laughs> gonna be doing this. Down there. <laughs> but it is $4 per person. I think I've already said this. All day jetty pass, so you can take all day to walk out there and back if you want. 45 minute return solar train ride is $16 per person. And a load of different other things. Underwater observatory, I have seen that's actually pretty good. Kids will probably love that thing. Uh, $37 for adults, 22 for children. And the end of the jetty is closed as they are building a cafe 
discovery salient and artificial reefs. So we're not going to be doing that. It's um, I'm still sort of humming and hawing on the price. Four dollars per person to get out on the jetty is a bit steep, and it is starting to rain. <laughs> we don't really want to get wet. We'll have to come back another time and check out the jetty and do the do the walk on the jetty. Definitely. Yeah. Nicer day. Yeah, a lot nicer day. Right, right, that is us fully done here in Bustleton and heading on out of here to a free camp, which is where? I've got no idea. Capel. Capel. Capel, which I think is around half an hour, something like that. So we'll get out there and I think we'll end the video out there. But Bustleton is a beautiful little spot, this one. Um, I'm a bit surprised by it. I loved it. Apart from the weather. The weather sort of bit us in the ass a little bit, but nothing we can do about it. Let's get on the road. And we did see whales, so happy yeah. with that. Righto, let's do it. Let's get out of here. Get to camp. Free camp. Free camp. So we've made into Kafel a free RV rest area, 24 hour stay, which is unfortunately restricted to only three vans and we are pretty late. So we've missed out there. There's another little van behind ours. All along there, right next to a footy field. Um, and just looking at the map just before, sort of done some talking. I think we're gonna head towards Bunbury. As it is our next little port of call, Bunbury, it's a 48 hour free camp is it? Yeah. Yep, 48 hour free camp run by the information center. Uh, we did stay there before the last Bunbury episode. So we'll probably just head for that. But um, bit of a bummer that. Fully booked up, we are a bit late though. But that is it, right next to the footy field, bowls club up there and a community center I believe. And fully self-contained only anyway let's get on the road head towards bunbury i think it's another half an hour or so something like that um but yeah a bit of a bug at that is what it is isn't it First yep we'll deal with it at least we're not paying tonight we're in bunbury free camp yeah let's do it
good call i think because there's mosquitoes around here but it doesn't affect what we're going to see around here we didn't really plan on stopping and staying and looking around the capable area um we did just want to get into bunbury pretty early in the morning and make the most of having the two nights free there uh we're just gonna i guess get in there tonight and lose that extra night if you know what i mean the extra couple of hours there let's get into it <laughs> you love a good rainbow, don't you? I do, but that's solid. And you can see the other one above it. Just, just and yeah. There's another one below it as well. You can't see that one. But we're here in Bunbury. We've made it to Bunbury and we're back in our spot that we stayed last time. Right on the beachfront here and um, admiring the rainbow. You're loving it? Yeah. <laughs> solid. <laughs> From the moment we arrived back here, it just started bucketing down, which is a bit of a disappointment. We're hoping for some good weather coming back to Bunbury, but... Doesn't look like it. Nothing we can really do about that, but we're going to end the episode here, and hopefully on the next episode, we've got some good weather to check out the dolphins and check out a little bit of, I guess, Bunbury in the good weather, in the nice weather, unlike last time. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, We'll see you on the next one. <laughs> See you guys. Cheers. The only thing I've lost weight off is my fingers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you recorded. Right, hey, our last stop before we leave Bustleton is the Bustleton. Mm. Nope.